imperial eagles, small gilded bronze birds were the French equivalent of British colours, the heart and soul of the regiment. To have one captured by the enemy was a disgrace. I'm sure that most of us have seen the TV film or read the book Sharp's Eagle. I've covered it here on the podcast. In it, our gallant green-clad rifles officer captures a French Imperial Eagle at Talavera in July 1809. But did you know that there was no eagle captured at Talavera? Do you know when the British actually did capture the first eagle of the Peninsula War and who the hero was who did it? Well, stay tuned, because today, that's what we're discussing. This is a real tale of daring do and bravery. The capture of the eagle takes place during a battle I haven't actually covered on the podcast, the Battle of Barossa, fought in southern Spain in March 1811. As an aside, if you're interested, then I just want to flag that the battle is covered in my new book that should be released at the end of November. That's the Military History Geek's Guide to the Peninsula War, Volume 2. It covers the battles of Busaco, Barossa, Fuentes de Añoro and Albuera, amongst others. Please subscribe to my mailing list over at redcoathistory.com slash newsletter to find out more and keep up to date. In early 1811, as Wellington pushed the French out of Portugal, British and Portuguese troops were also engaged in another theatre of the Peninsula War, the Siege of Cadiz. Here they were helping the Spanish to defend their temporary capital against the might of Marshal Victor's French troops. If Cadiz fell, then so would any organised Spanish resistance in the peninsula, and that would be a disaster. Commanding the British forces there was a fascinating character, Lieutenant General Sir Thomas Graham. Graham was a Scottish laird who had quit the easy life of a landowning gentleman to fight the French after the death of his wife in 1792. She had died on a boat off the south of France, and while escorting her body home for burial, Graham was accosted by French revolutionaries who opened the coffin and disturbed her body. Angered and upset, he decided to dedicate his life to fighting the French. As dedications go, that's a pretty good one. He volunteered for action at the Siege of Toulon and then raised the 90th Regiment of Foot, the Perthshire Volunteers. Over the succeeding years, he saw action at the Siege of Malta, served in the West Indies and was alongside the great Sir John Moore during the arduous retreat to Karuna. It was an impressive CV for a soldier who hadn't even donned a uniform until he was in his 40s. Now, I don't want to dwell for too long on the siege of Cadiz itself, as I want to try and get straight into the action. Suffice it to say that this, as was often the case, was very difficult working alongside the Spanish. They really had their challenges. They were brave men, but often the Spanish commanders were incapable of effectively leading their troops. That was certainly the case during the Battle of Barossa. Anyway, after much back and forth, it was finally decided to launch an expedition from Cadiz to relieve the siege. On February the 21st, 1811, the expedition set sail from Cadiz with a plan to land nearly 14,000 men, 4,000 of them British, further along the coast and then attack the French in the rear. It was a risky strategy, and General Graham, for the sake of good relations with the Spanish, agreed to be subordinate of General Manuel La Peña. Sadly, La Peña was a poor soldier of limited ability and frayed nerves. Even his own men called him Lady Manuela due to his unwillingness to meet the French in battle. Things quickly went wrong for the expedition. Bad weather meant that they couldn't land where they wanted. And then the local guides proved to be useless, meaning that the troops became exhausted as they marched backwards and forwards across the sandy terrain. On the 5th of March 1811, there was finally a battle. Except by now, the French had had plenty of time to prepare their own plans. The principal engagement took place that day on the Barossa Heights, thinly held by a patchwork battalion of British flank companies. Outnumbered and abandoned by their Spanish allies, they were forced to withdraw, only to find an irate General Graham waiting for them at the bottom of the hill. Graham, realising the perilous situation that the entire Allied force now faced, saw that he had to act decisively. It's a bad business, Brown, he said to the colonel commanding the battalion. You must instantly turn around and attack. An attack they did. Outnumbered and outgunned, they fought their way back to the top of the ridge, buying precious time for Graham to get the rest of the men deployed. And now we're coming to the capture of the Eagle. Further north, on the British left flank, Colonel William Wheatley's brigade was emerging from the woods to tackle General Jean-Francois Laval's division. Amongst the British were the Irishmen of the 2nd 87th Regiment of Foot, that's the 2nd Battalion 87th, commanded by Major Hugh Gough. 
They rushed forward with their Gaelic rousing battle cry of Foa Bala! Apologies for my pronunciation. That means clear the way. The redcoats smashed into the Frenchmen of the 8th line who were still in column formation and couldn't get away. It was a brutal fight. The Irishmen in a furious rage and keen for blood. Ensign Edward Keogh at the forefront of the attack looked through the drifting smoke and spotted the top of a French eagle standard, its gold plating glinting in the sun. Keogh called to Sergeant Patrick Masterson and together they waded into the fray, the young ensign swinging his sword with deadly precision. Edward Fraser in his book The Soldiers Whom Wellington Led describes what happened next. At once he closed with the Frenchman and crossed swords with his left hand making a grab at the pole. Keogh got hold of it and tried to pull it away, but he could not wrench it free before the brave ensign went down with half a dozen musket balls and two bayonet stabs in his body. According to French accounts, Ensign Guillemin, not sure how you say that, as the eagle bearer of the 8th was, was named, fell dead at the same moment as Ensign Keogh, shot through the head by one of the British privates. Other Frenchmen rushed up then to rescue the eagle and formed around it hastily. One of the British privates who had seized hold of the staff as Keogh fell was then slashed to death, and once more the French recovered it. But they were not to keep it unchallenged. A close and desperately furious tussle followed. Seven French officers and sub-officers fell dead in gallantly defending the eagle. An eighth, Lieutenant Gazan, clung to the pole desperately with both hands, regardless of the wounds that nearly hacked him to pieces. Finally, the eagle was torn from his grasp by Sergeant Masterson, who remained at the end the sole unwounded survivor of the attacking British party. Gazan, it said, survived miraculously. We are told, and he lived to be decorated by Napoleon for his devoted courage. Sergeant Masterson carried the eagle off and kept it. End quote. As Sergeant Masterson waved his trophy in the air, it's claimed he shouted the wonderful quote, But Jabers boys, I've got the cuckoo! I wish I could do that justice with an Irish accent. It was the first eagle the British had captured during the Peninsular War. With the capture of the eagle, the French began to break and the battle was won. It had been a terrific victory by a small British force, unsupported by their allies and heavily outnumbered. But despite everything, the goals of the expedition had not been achieved, and the force marched back into Cadiz, having had little effect on the strategic situation. The triumphant Sergeant, Sergeant Patrick Masterson was, was rewarded for his valour with a commission to the rank of Ensign. He remained in the army, eventually becoming a captain and retiring in 1828. As an interesting aside, Patrick Masterson's descendant, James Masterson, I'm presuming based on the dates that that must have been his grandson, although I could be wrong, became an officer in the Devonshire Regiment, and he won a Victoria Cross at the Siege of Ladysmith during the Second anglo Boer War. A nice South African connection there for me. So I hope you enjoyed that mini episode, guys. I should have covered the battle earlier in the season in more detail, but I hope that this makes up for it. It's a small attempt, but I hope you like it. At least we can now celebrate the Masterson family and their amazing bravery across the generations. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please comment and share the link as it really helps to spread the word and bring these amazing stories of our Redco ancestors to a wider audience, something that I believe is really important. All right, take care guys, bye bye.